My name is Jim Flaherty and I'm with Atlantic Physical Therapy Center uh, and today we're going to be demonstrating uh, some anterior cruciate ligament functional testing that we're performing here. There are many challenges these days with physical therapists and sports medicine professionals when they're rehabilitating their athletes. Uh, and one of the main challenges that we, we face uh, and, and that we struggle with at times is really making a good determination of when, when our athletes are really ready to return to their sport or their activity. Um, at, at times we were just using variables such as time passing or range of motion measurements, manual muscle testing, girth measurements, uh, and even isokinetic testing to help make that determination. But those, those, those uh, tests by themselves are not really giving us the information that we really, really need in order to make a determination whether a patient is ready to return to an athletic activity, whether they can you know, return to jumping and landing and cutting and pivoting uh, and being able to do all those activities with, with real good confidence. So we felt it was important to come up with a formal uh, testing protocol that we're going to do with our anterior cruciate ligament patients. And these different tests are going to be done at different stages throughout the, the patient's you know, rehab. And it's going to help give us that information uh, to make that determination. The, you know, the doctors obviously want to know whether the, the patient is ready, the therapist wants to know whether the patient is ready, and the athlete certainly really wants to know whether he or she is ready to return to their sport and have confidence knowing that they can do so. So we're going to be demonstrating some of these different functional tests today. Uh, we'll be demonstrating um, tests that are done at six to nine weeks postoperatively, such as a just a single leg balance test and a single leg balance test with eyes closed. Uh, we're going to demonstrate some tests that we do at 12 to 14 weeks postoperatively, and these tests help us determine a patient's readiness to return to running or jogging. Uh, two of those tests that we're going to demonstrate today are the STAR excursion or the Y test, um, which is a functional reaching test, and we're also going to demonstrate the single leg squat to 45 degrees. Uh, we're also going to demonstrate some very reliable and um, evidence-based tests such as the single leg hop test for distance, a triple leg hop, a triple hop for distance test, and a crossover hop for distance test, which are unilateral limb tests. And then finally, we're going to show you one of our clients performing a real high intensity test that we do um, when the patient is past six months postoperatively, and that's called a LEFT test, L-E-F-T. And that is a unique test that's done. We're going to do that out in the parking lot. It's multidirectional. It incorporates a lot of real sport-specific activities done back-to-back, -back, such as cutting, pivoting, uh, cutting at 45 degrees, cutting at 90 degrees, backward sprinting, forward sprinting, side shuffling, and karaoke. And the thing about that test is it also helps us watch the patient as they're starting to get fatigued, which will really give us some information about whether they still can have that good neuromuscular control um, as they're doing these different activities. Um, and as they're starting to get tired, whether they can still have that control and maintain that good form and technique. So we'll be showing that test later on out in the parking lot. What we would do is have Jane step on the scale and the book. She's going to face the mirror. Face the mirror would be easier. And let's just say that, you know, the patient weighed, you know, 120 pounds. You'd want to see her be able to do a squat with good technique and form and see, you know, close to 60 pounds going through her operative leg and come back up just to show that she wasn't favoring the stronger side. And then you could switch and switch the scale and do it on the right side as well. So this would just tell us, is she leaning over and favoring the stronger side or is she squatting, keeping her weight equal through both legs? And do that again. Good technique. Make, you could, you would, uh, make sure she's controlling the knee in the sagittal plane, which she is. Weight is back on her heels a little bit and come back up there. Other tests that we do at this stage um, are just a single leg balance test. So Jane can just stand right here and she's going to stand on her operative leg. And she wants to be able to maintain a single leg stance position for 30 seconds with good control. Things that you'll look for is, is she shifting weight? Is her hip dropping? Um, is her, are her shoulders dropping? Is she able to maintain nice level shoulder, nice level pelvis? And then she, you would switch and compare it to her stronger side. And she has to be able to maintain this for 30 seconds. 
And the final thing is to do this with our eyes closed. So we do the same single leg test on the left side and have her close her eyes. Obviously makes the task a lot harder. And then we would switch and do the other side. Two of the tests that we do at this stage are a single leg squat test to 45 degrees and we do a test that we call a star excursion or a Y test. So Jane first is going to demonstrate the single leg squat test. Um, and first we would have her do her good leg or her non-operative leg. And she's going to squat to 45 degrees and come back up. And she's going to do that 10 times on her good leg. And you want to make sure that she's keeping her knee in line with the second toe, which means we don't want to see a lot of valgus occurring at the knee. We don't want to see her lose that control in the sagittal plane. We want to make sure the pelvis is staying level and that she can perform 10 squats in a row to 45 degrees. Good leg. And then that's just to kind of warm her up and then she would stand on her operative leg and she needs to do 10 single leg squats, 45 degrees, that's perfect. Maintain that control, no excessive femoral internal rotation, no significant hip drop. Doing it in front of a mirror can be real helpful so she can see what she's doing and control that knee angle. All right, so if the patient can perform 10 single leg squats to 45 degrees, good control of the knee in the sagittal plane, she passes that test. The STAR excursion, or sometimes called the Y test, um, it's, a, it's a functional reaching test. We always want to start with the non-operative leg or the strong leg first. Um, so you can put some tape on the ground that looks like a Y with a line going straight, a line going 45 degrees lateral, and a line going 45 degrees medial. So she's going to start with a forward reach. She's going to be standing on her non-operative leg, and she's going to reach forward as far as she can. You want to maintain good control of the knee in the sagittal plane once again. And then we would measure how far her toe goes, and we'd measure to the nearest centimeter. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see the foot actually touch down. We don't want to see her lose balance and her hand touch down. And we want to make sure she's controlling that knee uh, without a lot of hip drop or femoral internal rotation. So we'd measure how far she could reach, and then we would test the same thing standing on her operative leg. A forward reach, good control, no touchdown. We'd measure the distance. And what we're looking for here is that she can reach within four centimeters of what her stronger leg or non-operative leg can do. So we don't want to see much more than a four centimeter difference. We would test forward, and then we would test what we call posterior medial, on if she's doing her right leg, so she's standing on her strong leg. Now, Jane, we're going to come more along this line right here. And once again, no touchdown. We'd measure that distance. That's posterior medial. And then we would do posterior medial on her left leg. So she'd stand on the left leg, go along that 45 degree angle, no touchdown, no loss of balance, control that knee. And we'd measure the difference. Once again, we're looking for a four centimeter or less of a difference comparing the good leg to the weaker leg. So then we do posterior lateral. So she'd stand on her right leg once again. And now she's going to kind of reach behind and underneath, go as far as she can. You would measure that difference by putting a piece of tape or a line and then measuring the distance with a tape measure. So I'll just demonstrate that. And then we would switch legs and do it again. So you could put a little mark here and then just take a tape measure and measure, see how far she's going. And we're looking for, once again, a four centimeter or less of a difference. Now, a couple testing guidelines um, that are important. First, we always test the, the stronger leg first or the non-operative leg first. Uh, the first time she jumps should be maybe a 50% effort. Um, we'll usually have her do a couple of practice ones at 50%, 75%, and then the third time would be giving her maximum effort to do this uh, jumping test. Uh, she's allowed to kind of use her arms to create momentum as much as she wants to. Um, we start with the toe behind the line. We take the measurement to within the, the nearest uh, centimeter using a tape measure. 
A failed jump will, would consist of her losing her balance when she lands, touching the floor with her hands or her arms or with her opposite leg, um, or when she sticks that landing having a, 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 an additional short hop. Those would all be considered a failed test and we'd have to repeat the test. Um, once again, no restrictions given on her arm movement at all. So you would just, the first jump is just going to be like a little half effort, jumping, landing on one leg, sticking the landing. And she'd go back, start on the tape again. And this one would be maybe a three quarter effort, maybe a little bit more of a jump, stick that landing. Good. Wobbling is okay, but we want to see that landing controlled. And then this is going to be her max jump. Boom. She sticks the landing. And then you would just take a tape measure and you'd measure right to the heel, to the nearest centimeter, how far that she went. And that's on her strong leg. Then we'd retest it. She'd be standing on her bad leg or operative leg. Same thing. The first one would be just a medium 50% jump just to get the feel of it. Good. Second one would be loading up a little bit more, but still not max effort yet. Just still getting the feel of it, sticking that landing. Good. And then third jump is get her arms involved. Real good jump, real good landing. Stick that landing. Good. And we once again would just take a tape measure and measure in centimeters to where her heel was. Now then what we do is we have to calculate something called a limb symmetry index. We do this by dividing the operative limb average by the non-operative limb average and then multiplying by 100. And in order to pass this test, we want to see you know, our patients performing at least 90% distance compared to the stronger leg. Um, we're going to be doing three tests uh, at this stage. These are usually performed at 24 to 30 weeks. So now we're starting to get into that six and seven month time frame with our ACL patients when we're really trying to determine, you know, are they ready to get back on the field? So we're going to demonstrate, once again, the single leg hop for distance, a triple hop for distance, and a crossover hop for distance. These are all unilateral limb tests, and we're always comparing her operative leg against her non-operative leg, and we're looking to see if she can cover at least 90% distance compared to her stronger side. So we're going to demonstrate the single leg hop test again. Once again, you could do some practice trials. The first jump is a medium effort. Good. And then the third, the second jump, three quarters effort. Good. And then she's really going to try to nail this one and get a good jump, max effort, boom. She'd stick that landing, we would mark it, and then we could just measure with a tape measure to the nearest centimeter. Okay, and then her operative leg goes second, a little 50% effort. For the sake of time, we'll just go right into the max effort, and she would jump. We'd measure that distance, and we'd calculate the limb symmetry, make sure she's jumping at least 90% compared to her stronger leg. That's the single leg hop for distance. The triple hop for distance is three hops in a row, and the last hop has to be maintained for two seconds. Once again, we don't want to see the other foot touch the ground. We don't want to see her lose balance. So three consecutive hops in a row. One, two, three. We could put a marker down, and we'd measure that to the nearest centimeter, and then Good leg always goes first, the weaker leg always goes second. Three hops in a row, one, two, three, stick that landing, put a little marker down, and then we could measure with a tape measure, and she's got to cover at least 90% compared to her other leg. Yes. Okay, so the, the Jane's going to demonstrate the crossover hop for distance. We're standing on the strong leg first, always going lateral first. She's jumping over the line, lateral, medial, lateral, sticking the landing. Lateral, medial, lateral. And then she repeated on her operative leg. One, two, three. We would have her do that again. One, two, three. Good. Hold that for two seconds. Measure the distance. 
and then we'd calculate the limb symmetry index. Backwards printing again. 